fellow Kenyans, today is my last opportunity to address you as your president. Since independence, we have every five years, without fail, reaffirmed our democratic credentials. And we have done so by returning to the people, the sovereign of our nation, for a mandate to serve. We have, in this context, put our nation on consistent and predictable journey of deepening and maturing our democracy. Tomorrow, I will emulate that honor tradition and hand over the mantle to my successor, Dr. William Samoe Ruto, and I am profoundly grateful for the honor and privilege that you bestowed upon me to serve as the fourth president of this great republic of Kenya. In my service to you, the people of Kenya, I was supported by a cabinet, principal secretaries, holders of constitutional offices, security agencies, our ambassadors and permanent representatives in all our missions abroad, and indeed by all public servants. But most importantly, you, the people of Kenya, have walked with me each step of the way, cheering me, but also chastising me as the occasion dictated. To you all and to all those who have served with me during my tenure as president, please accept my immense and deep gratitude. So fellow Kenyans, tomorrow's inauguration, the last step in a process of electioneering is a moment for us to come together as one people to pursue the promise of Kenya as destined by God. This afternoon, ahead of tomorrow's inauguration, I hosted the incoming president, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, here at State House, Nairobi. As you are all aware, the transition process commenced on the 12th of August, 2022, and over the last few weeks, the doors of State House and the office of the president have been open to the technical teams from the office of the president-elect so as to facilitate a smooth transition and handover of power. This afternoon's meeting between the president-elect and myself is the final step in that process. Fellow Kenyans, the work of building a nation is a continuous endeavor past from one generation to another, from one administration to the next. And this in an unbroken chain that seeks to progressively build a more united, equitable, and prosperous Kenya. On my part, as head of state and government, I hand over leadership of a nation that has undergone consequential transformation over the last decade in every aspect of our national life. With the mandate you bestowed upon me, my administration, together we have fostered an integrated devolution as a way of life in our country. We have reinforced our educational and technical excellence and we have also successfully led the nation through the worst global health crisis in over a century. We also turned a number of challenges that we inherited and those that emerged during our tenure into areas of opportunity for a better Kenya. The 
The passion we received from the late President Mwai Kibaki was carried through. We built on his legacy and indeed on those of, previous, of the previous two administrations in every area of public life. We built on the late President Daniel Aras Moy's love for education that was further built upon as free primary education by President Mwai Kibaki. And with the mandate that you gave me, we institutionalized free secondary education, thus heralding a 100% transition from primary to secondary education. To further enhance the competitiveness of our workforce, we have placed the nation on a pathway to competency-based curriculum, which institutionalizes a system that seeks to nurture creativity and innovation in our children. Aware that insecurity can break the chain of our national development and deter the realization of the national anthem's promise of plenty within our borders, we have built on the work done and created a much improved security environment. Critically, we muted the wave of terror attacks that had placed a stranglehold on our nation, reduced crime rates, and secured significant progress in terms of illicit trade in firearms and other long-standing security challenges. We achieve this by retooling our security organs and making them more capable to address the dynamic contemporary security challenges that Kenya faces. To realize the dream of equitable development, we have fostered and given impetus to the devolved system of governance. In line with the 2010 Constitution, we institutionalized devolution and forever changed the face of Kenya. Through devolution, government is now much closer to the people with Kenya shillings 2.5 trillion transferred by the national government to the counties from 2013 to date. Now Wanainchi's needs can be heard and addressed in real time and the funding transferred to counties can be better aligned to the priorities at the local level. With the mandate you gave us, we pursued the vision of, a, of previous administrations for greater economic integration within the East African region and led the push to admit the Democratic Republic of the Congo into the East African community. With this singular move, the East African community common market grew by 90 million people, yielding an expanding market of 300 million persons and the consequent enhanced opportunities for Kenyan enterprises. Building on the place of pride earned by our forefathers, we fortified our global footprint. Our non-permanent membership in the UN Secretary, in the UN Security Council, has amplified Kenya's voice on international peace and security matters. Indeed, from 2013 to date, we have had over 100 inbound and outbound state visits, hosting heads of state and government from across the world. And Kenya is now a consequential voice and an undisputed leader in continental and global issues. This has enhanced opportunities for Kenyans in both the diaspora, but also within the international civil service. As a consequence, diaspora remittance have increased tenfold over the last decade, and they now stand at an all-time high at over Kenya shillings 400 billion per annum, 
as of 2021, surpassing some of our traditional exports as foreign exchange earners. We have also built on the aspiration of the independence generation to foster inclusivity and gender parity. We have furthered the pioneering spirit of the second administration that elevated women leadership and in an unbroken chain built on the progress made under the third administration and we have vastly expanded women's participation in governance and significantly increased the number of women in cabinet and in senior ranks of government as well as our security organs. Indeed, we have built on President Mwai Kibaki's path-breaking investment in infrastructure. We hand over 11,500 kilometers of newly tarmac roads under our administration doubling the number of kilometers constructed from the dawn of the Republic to 2013. My administration has upgraded Kenya's infrastructure in terms of roads, ports, bridges, fiber optics, power generation and transmission. And as a result, Kenya now stands out as an investment destination of choice and a continental as well as a global hub. In enhancing service delivery, with the mandate you gave us, we also transform the way government services reach the Mwanainchi. We did this through the introduction of Huduma Centers and the e-Citizen Online platform, which together have made access to public services a fast and pleasant experience and not the toll that every citizen had to endure in the past to obtain basic services. Now passport applications, birth certificates, marriage certificates, business registration, driver's licenses, and so many others can be done online from anywhere in the world. As a digital government, we successfully transitioned from analog to digital television and radio, resulting in the country today being home to 130 TV stations up from 14 in 2013, and 204 radio stations up from 130 in 2013. These figures do not factor the massive expansion in the digital space that has seen many hundreds of thousands of Kenyans successfully monetize various digital communication avenues. I have immeasurable pride in having the magical tag of Made in Kenya affixed to a much wider range of products, and my administration has reinvigorated domestic manufacturing and diversified our exports of finished products. From my predecessor, President Mwai Kibaki, we picked up a country that was, 12, was the 12th largest economy in Africa to its current position as Africa's sixth largest economy. We have almost tripled the wealth of our nation from a GDP of 4.5 trillion in 2013 to close to 13 trillion currently. Consequently, the income per capita also rose sharply from Kenya shillings 127,065 per person in 2013 to Kenya shillings 245,045 per person in 2021. This has seen Kenya graduate from a lower middle income country and it is notable that if we continue on this growth trajectory what this means is that by next year, we will join the League of Truly Middle-Income Countries. In another milestone as we mark, as a mark of the growth that we have experienced, our tax revenues have more than doubled 
from slightly above Kenya shillings 800 billion in the financial year 2012-2013 to Kenya shillings 2 trillion in the financial year 2021-2022. The dream of our forefathers was to rid the country of disease, ignorance, and hunger, and to bring the nation closer to this goal. In addition to the educational gains I highlighted earlier, we have connected more than 13 million Kenyans to clean water and registered a 400% growth in the number of Kenyans issued with NHIF cards with 17.1 with million Kenyans currently issued compared to 4.4 million issued as of April 2013. To enhance access to healthcare, we have constructed countrywide an additional 1,912 healthcare facilities across all levels of care, representing a 43% increase in the total number of public health facilities in the country. These facilities range from the recently commissioned modern state-of-the-art level six Kenyatta University Teaching Referral and Research Hospital to health centers and dispensaries at the village level. So fellow Kenyans, every administration has added arrows to our national quiver in energy production. When I took the oath of office in 2013, Kenya's total grid was 1,300 megawatts. This now stands at 2,700 megawatts. But even as we doubled power production, we ensured that our exploits did not break the intergenerational chain of sustainable development. Thus, 80% of the power that Kenya generates is green energy propelling Kenya to an unenviable position as a continental leader and a pioneering global role model in the generation of green energy. To share in this plenty with all Kenyan families, we have tripled the number of households with access to electricity by connecting an extra 6.3 million households up from 2.3 million households in 2013. So I therefore hand over in an unbroken chain a country that has connected more people to electricity, more homes to electricity than any other country in Africa over the last decade. We also heed, heeded that intergenerational call to be conscious, to conserve our heritage and splendor so as to pass it on to future generations in as good a state as it was given to us, if not better. We have done this by leading a planting campaign where 1.34 billion trees have been planted, moving our forest cover from 6.99% in 2013 to 8.83% in 2022, and increasing our tree cover from 12.3%, thus surpassing the set constitutional threshold of 10% in a record five years. As a result of our conservation efforts and other legal and institutional reforms, we have also recorded the lowest levels of poaching in our nation's history, and thus registering the highest wildlife population for our big five and a majority of other wildlife species that share Kenya with us. So fellow Kenyans, while we have made remarkable progress, it is also important that I note and appreciate that building a nation is a journey. There is still much more to be done to move our nation to the next level of development towards realizing our Vision 2030. And the fourth administration, which I had the privilege to lead, has built on the foundation laid on others upon which the fifth administration can also build. 
So fellow Kenyans, let me conclude by saying that to serve one's country is the greatest honor any citizen can receive. It is a sacred trust and it has been an immense privilege that I have not taken for granted. I thank you all for the immense opportunities you have awarded me to serve in various public roles over the last two and a half decades, which have included, amongst others, Chairman of the Kenya Tourism Board, Member of the Jomo Kenyatta University Council, Chairperson of the Disaster Emergency Response Committee, a Member of Parliament for Gatundu South, a Cabinet Minister serving in the ministries of local government, the Ministry of Trade, the Ministry of Finance, the Leader of the Official Opposition, the Deputy Prime Minister, and as the President of this Republic for the last 10 years. In all the work I have done as President, and in every presidential decision I have made, and in every executive action I have taken, in every bill I have proposed and assented to, I have been guided by the dream of our forefathers, and that is the dream to eliminate poverty, ignorance, and disease, and to improve the quality of life of all Kenyans, and to create conditions for everyone to achieve their dreams. As a hallmark of our democracy, therefore, I will tomorrow before God and you, my fellow countrymen, hand over the instruments of power to our new president at the Moi International Sports Center, Kasarani. And with that, the fourth administration will come to an end and the tenure of the fifth administration will begin. My entire family and I join all Kenyans in wishing the very best to our next president, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, and extending to him our warmest congratulations for receiving the mandate of Kenyans to lead us as our fifth president. And so, Mr. President-elect, as you walk the path to your inauguration and beyond, you will be the president, not just for those who voted for you, but for all Kenyans. In the prophetic words of our national anthem, we are summoned to purposefully dwell in unity, peace, and liberty, working hard and together so that plenty may be found within our borders. I therefore wish and pray for your success, as your success will be Kenya's success. I thank you all. May God bless you, and may God bless this great republic of Kenya. Asante sana.